dizzying tightrope acts, fearless predator tamers, and hilarious clowns. If you want to see for yourself what acrobatic feats humans are capable of, you should definitely drop by a circus. While today's circus acts are always subject to some degree of social change, and more and more showmen are refraining from using wild animals in their programs, things were completely different in the past. For those who suffered from a rare disease whose appearance changed, there was often no choice but to join the showman and henceforth lure spectators into the circus tent as strange abnormals or monsters. We'll now show you which 10 people were considered to be the biggest circus freaks on our planet many years ago. Before we get started, be sure to hit that like button and ring the notification bell for more videos. Also, stick around until the end to learn about one of the strangest and most unbelievable people to ever have joined the circus. Charles Stratton when Charles Stratton was born in Connecticut on January 4, 1838, nothing initially indicated that the baby was any different from other infants. In fact, Charles was born an extremely strong child and developed perfectly normally for the first few months of his life. But then, out of the blue, the boy's growth began to stagnate. When the small child was just four years old, he was discovered by P.T. Barnum and included in his circus act. From then on, the 102-centimeter-tall Charles appeared as General Tom Thumb, singing, dancing, and imitating prominent people. The rest of the showman's life would have a few different stations in store for Charles. On his tours through Europe, the actor even got to know many members of important noble families. Later, in 1863, Charles Stratton married Lavinia Warren, who was also short of stature. The magnificent wedding of the two which was attended by around 2,000 guests, caused a stir among the rest of the population. Even then, U.S. President Abraham Lincoln gave the newly married couple a few presents. However, thanks to his fame, General Tom Thumb had also made a fortune. He could easily afford to maintain a few horses and even his own yacht. Charles Stratton died of a stroke in 1883. Myrtle Corbin a rare gene mutation resulted in Myrtle Corbin being born with four legs. In addition to the conventional pair of legs, the American, born in 1868, also had another, shorter inner pair on which she could not walk. What ultimately led to this physical deformity is uncertain. Although Myrtle's parents looked strikingly alike, they told doctors they weren't related, which officially ruled out a case of incest. From the age of 13, the youthful Myrtle performed as the four-legged girl from Texas in the circus. She soon attracted so many spectators that other showmen also began to present four-legged women, even if the additional limbs were often nothing but brazen fakes. At the age of 19, Myrtle married James Bicknell, with whom she had four daughters and a son. During the first pregnancy, it was found that the four-legged woman not only had two external sex organs, but also two wombs. Isaac Sprague Due to his extremely skinny appearance, Isaac Sprague was always touted in the circus as the living skeleton. Until the age of 12, however, the boy from Massachusetts still had a perfectly normal build for his age. However, after a swim, Isaac began to feel ill and inexplicably lost weight. In retrospect, it's believed that Isaac suffered from progressive muscular atrophy. The immense weight loss that occurred as part of this clinical picture would accompany the American until the end of his life. As is the case with Charles Stratton, it was the circus pioneer P.T. Barnum who became aware of Isaac Sprague and included him in his show. At the age of 44, Isaac was 1.68 meters tall and weighed only 19.5 kilograms. He died in poverty on January 5, 1887 in Chicago. Ella Harper 
Due to a rare physical deformity, Ella Harper was able to bend her knees backward and walk on all fours. Since the American was extremely unusual and caused many people to claim she looked like an animal, she went down in circus history as the Camel Girl. In 1886, Ella was an integral part of W.H. Harris's Nickel Plate Circus and also made the front pages of local newspapers. Back then, at the tender age of just 16, the Camel Girl earned a whopping $200 a week, a small fortune by the standards of the time. However, the teenager soon decided to leave show business to go back to school. In the course of her further life, however, Ella experienced some serious blows of fate. Her daughter Mabel died in infancy. Later, the former circus actress and her husband adopted another child who, however, was also unable to reach the age of a toddler. Ella Harper died of colon cancer in 1921. Stefan Bibrowski Today, we know that Stefan Bibrowski suffered from hypertrichosis. However, when Stefan's mother saw her newborn son's body overgrown with hair in 1891, she believed that it was a special whim of fate. The superstitious woman had watched her husband get mauled by a lion when she was pregnant with Stefan. Since she never really accepted her own son, at the age of four she gave him into the hands of German entrepreneur Joseph Settlemeyer, who subsequently made the lion cub an attraction at a curiosity show. While Stefan was portrayed as a wild, hairy beast in the countless shows that would later take him across the United States, the truth was that he was a highly educated man who spoke five different languages. After his time with the circus, Bibrowski returned to Germany, where he died of a heart attack in the early 1930s. Wang the story of a Chinese man who went by the name of Wang shows that not everyone faints when faced with the tempting sums of money from show business. In the 1930s, an ambitious businessman in Manchuria met a mysterious man who was truly unusual in appearance. According to this, the back of Wang's head was adorned with a long, horny outgrowth that was over 33 centimeters long. When Robert Ripley got his hands on the Chinese man's photo, he was keen to make him a show attraction, featuring him as the human unicorn. However, Wang could not be persuaded to give up his old life in order to be presented in a freak show someday in the future. Grady Styles. In the medical world, the genetic merging of the fingers and toes into claw-like limbs is known as ectrodactyly. The American Grady Stiles also suffered from such a deformity, which made his hands more reminiscent of a crab's claws than conventional human body parts. The fact that Grady Stiles attracted many spectators to the circus during his performances as Lobster Boy is at best a side note in the sad life of the American. In 1978, Grady, who had struggled with alcohol problems and aggression, shot and killed his own fiancé on the eve of their wedding. He was subsequently found guilty of murder, but at the time, no state facility felt able to accommodate an inmate with ectrodactyly. So it was that Grady was instead sentenced to house arrest and 15 years probation. His next partner, Mary Teresa, also had to suffer from Grady violent outbursts again and again. Finally, in 1992, she hired a hitman who killed Stiles for $300. The perpetrator was later sentenced to 27 years in prison, and Mary was sentenced to 43 years behind bars. In fact, Grady was so hated in his neighborhood that only a handful of people attended his funeral. In addition, no one volunteered to serve as a pallbearer. Chang and Eng Bunker 
We have Chang and Eng Bunker to thank for the fact that we still referred to conjoined twins as Siamese twins most of the time. The two brothers, who were fused together side by side, were discovered in Siam in 1829. The showman's life then took Chang and Eng across the globe. Later, they became U.S. citizens and took the surname Bunker. In 1843, they married sisters Sarah and Adelaide Yates and fathered a total of 20 21 perfectly healthy children, 11 of whom survived to adulthood. After suffering a stroke in 1870, Chang remained paralyzed for the rest of his life. The twins died on January 17, 1874, at the age of 62. The subsequent autopsy provided the insight that the brothers had not shared a single vital organ, so they could theoretically have been separated. In reality, if these two had wished to live completely separate, separate lives, they could have, with only a few minor complications. However, after spending so much time together and earning a name for themselves due to their condition, it's unlikely that either of them would have wanted to have had the procedure performed. Schlitzie the touching case of the mentally handicapped performer who was cynically christened Schlitzie shows that circus operators really did not shy away from anything in former years. It was primarily the young man's malformed head that attracted many onlookers and earned him the inhuman nickname the Pinhead. Both the previous history of the actor and the causes of his deformity are largely unknown. What is certain is that he was born in New York at the beginning of the the 20th century and appeared in the mid-20s for the first time in the so-called Freak Show by P.T. Barnum. According to legend, the showman was the child of a prominent family who sold their son to a traveling circus shortly after his birth due to his deformities. It's commonly assumed that the American remained at the intellectual level of a three-year-old throughout his life. We don't know much about his bizarre condition, but it seems as though he was mentally disabled by modern standards and likely needed much more help than he ever received. Thankfully, he was at least able to find proper employment. However, it seems unlikely that he even knew what to do with the money he earned. We don't know anything about his later years of life, nor do we know how old he lived to be. Prince Randian because Prince Randian was born without limbs, he was also known within the sideshow world as the living torso or the human worm. As is so often the case, it was P.T. Barnum who caught the eye of the boy from British Guiana and subsequently presented him as a carnival sensation for 45 years. Randian also starred in the 1932 film Freaks, where he performed alongside other real sideshow artists, crawling on the floor or lighting a cigarette using just his mouth. Away from the circus tent, Randian was considered an extremely intelligent man who spoke four languages. At the age of 63, the showman suddenly collapsed after a performance and died. Even though many of these performers likely had no means of making a living outside of a circus, that is, you have to give credit to P.T. Barnum for providing these people with a way of making money. While his true intentions have been heavily scrutinized over the years, and the story of his so-called freak show has been glamorized in recent films, this man clearly did the best he could for these people, as he would often pay them very handsomely. So often these days, we look to ridicule people for the things they did many years ago. In the case of P.T. Barnum, many people feel as though this man simply profited off the misfortune of other people. However, that's only part of the story. Yes, Barnum certainly exploited the deformities of these poor people, but without him, many of these people would have likely ended up homeless or worse. While it's easy to blame someone for the outward appearance they tend to give, we must also take a step back and give them credit for the good that they spread, no matter how small that may be. P.T. Barnum helped to put smiles on the faces of millions of people around the world and gave many so-called freaks a chance at living a wealthy life, all things considered. At the end of the day, it seems safe to assume that many of these people were honored to perform in Barnum's circus, allowing them to find a way to provide for their families and spread happiness to anyone who wanted to attend a show.
All right, folks, now it's your turn. What are your thoughts on the featured characters who were flaunted as circus geeks? We're looking forward to your comments. Remember to subscribe and click the bell to stay up to date from now on. Thank you for watching. Have a good one and see you next time.